Well, good, out, good morning, everybody. It's uh, Sunday morning here, and uh, this is a video that I've wanted to do for a while. A lot of you have asked me repeatedly, how do dealers pick lines? Um, and that's an excellent question. Um, and I'm gonna give you the three basic ways that most dealers I see go about picking a line. I um, also want to talk a little bit about all of the things that go into supporting that decision when you do make um, an investment. Because as dealers, they don't, there's, we, they don't give us anything. We, we're not getting this gear to put on the floor, to demonstrate, to show. People think that they, they just give it to us. The, we actually have to buy it. So we have to make an investment a significant financial investment into the product. A lot of times you have to buy in, um, when, you're, when you're picking up a new line, you need to make, you can't just buy one piece and say, we're a dealer. You a lot of times have to buy often three pieces or you need to make a certain dollar investment. And that's sort of the, the catch. Um, so that, that you're committed, that you're not just picking up you know, the cheapest thing in their line and calling it, you know, calling yourself a dealer for that brand. Um, I've got my iPad here, so I'm just gonna go through some of my notes. The, um, the interesting thing is when you do, when you are looking at lines, you want to look at how does that product fit into your mix? Is it a duplication of something you already have or does it offer slightly a different twist to the current lineup that you presently have and um, that's something that requires a lot of thinking for example you know we've always been uh, big fans of, of a render and we still are I mean we're we're probably one of the biggest render dealers in the country big fans of the of the company the product the product mix the sound the build quality everything that goes into to making a render great. Um, I think we were, you know, dealer number six in the country, and this is going back many years ago. Uh, so we were clearly one of the first dealers, and, and I saw a great product that has just continued to get better and better over time. That being said, we do have people that come into the store, or they call us on the phone, and they're saying, hey, it's got to be a Rune solution. And previously, I had just referred people to Small Green Computer and said, hey, just give Andrew a call. It's a great product. All the best. Um, we do have the Rune Nucleus, but, you know, to be honest with you, it really wasn't um, something some of these folks would go for at the price point. Um, and they were looking for more features and functionality. So Inuus was something that we've recently picked up and they offer, you know, starting with the Zen Mini from roughly $1,300, $1,400. It has ripping capability, CD ripping capability. It runs Rune Core. It runs Rune. Um, has a terabyte of storage. I mean, it's unbelievable what this little Zen Mini does for the money. And obviously, if somebody's looking for a better Rune solution, then you can move up the Inuus line. That being said, something that we've discovered is that the new Inuus app, which is completely re re revised from what they had two or three years ago, um, is significantly better than most of the things that we see out there today. Um, it's stable, it's got great features, it's, it's you know pretty on the screen, it's good to look at, it's very graphic intensive. Um, and it sounds good. So the benefit for people is that if they really want to do Rune, they can do Rune with the Inuus, but they can also start off with the Inuus app and actually may never leave because sonically it sounds great. Functionally, it's good as well. So that's something that we're always thinking about. Where is the demand? What are the questions that we're getting? And keeping track of this to identify the best product mix in, in our lineup. So that's something that we look at. But to get to the, the root of the question, for me, when I observe the market of dealers out there, it really comes down to three types. Um, you've got uh, the dealers such as myself that's basically looking at the product 
from a sound standpoint first. How does it sound? Is this something that I want to buy, because I am going to buy it, and is this something I'm going to want to take home for my own system? If the answer is yes, then that's something I'm definitely going to be very, very interested in. And there's a number of products that are out there on the market that we could carry but don't carry because we, you know, personally, I just don't care for the sound. And you may say, well, your customers might. Well, maybe. But what you've got to know is that when people come into the store, 99% of the time, they actually don't know what they're looking for. They're looking for a new pair of speakers, but they don't know what. They're looking for a new amplifier, but they don't know what. They're looking for a new DAC or a streamer, but they don't know which one. So if we believe in the product, it's a lot easier to sell it. That's always been my belief. Your body language, the you know everything that you talk about the product, your enthusiasm, the inflection in your voice, all of that is going to play out um, when you really believe in the product you're going to have enthusiasm for it. People need to get over this, this belief, this, this false reality that there is a best. There isn't a best, okay? There isn't a best car for everybody. There isn't a best watch for everybody. There isn't a best house for everybody. There isn't a best meal for everybody. So you need to get over this, what's the best, you know, what's the, what you need to be looking for is what is the product that I like best. And don't worry about what other people are thinking. Everybody else in the marketplace might be buying product A and you like product B. Great. So I think that's one of the, the fallacies that's out there is that people are constantly worrying about, but what's best? What should I buy? What's best? We can guide you to a certain point, but we really won't know unless you listen to the product or you describe more in detail of exactly what you're looking for. So that's the first type of dealer. The one that's I falls in love with the sound and says, yeah, I love it. I want this in my home. I could easily see me with that. Now, that might be totally different. So you could say... For example, a Magico speaker is very different than a avant-garde horn speaker or an MBL speaker or a panel speaker. But are, when you as a dealer are looking at these things, you need to ask yourself, would you be happy with a Magico? Yes. Would you be happy with the avant-garde? Absolutely. Would you be happy with the MBL? Most definitely. If you can honestly look at these products and say, yeah, I'd be happy with any of them. Um, you don't have to pick the winner. You don't have to pick the best, but you do have to understand and appreciate the product for what it is and its capabilities and be willing to accept that and, you know, um, you know, be enthusiastic about it and want that product. So there are products out there, as I mentioned, where I'm like, yeah, I know it will sell, but I'm not really enthusiastic about it. That's not something I would buy with my money. So I have a hard time really justifying, you know, bringing in something like that. Um, I don't want to name names, but there's plenty of big, well-known brands, as you can imagine, that just might not be my cup of tea. And again, if you're not enthusiastic about it, it's very difficult to, to sell it effectively and convince other people to buy it when you wouldn't even buy it for yourself. So... That's the type of dealer I am. I see a few of those around, to be honest with you, but not many. Um, my experience is most dealers are looking at it going, it sells. Uh, I'll bring it in because it sells. It's easy. It sells. Uh, Macintosh, Martin Logan, um, several brands that you could go through and say, but it's easy. It sells. And that's fine. If that's the approach that they want to take, that's their approach. I find it very difficult to be enthusiastic about something when, you know, I, I, I wouldn't buy it for myself. And it's hard to sell it in, in good conscience if you're not going to be enthusiastic about it. The third, um, the third way I see some dealers go about picking brands is solely based on territory. Now this is a sore spot for me personally because it doesn't make any sense. Um, 
territory is something that was effective in 1985. It's not effective in 2022. And I'll explain why. There are some dealers out there that have a shitty website. They have no marketing. They don't do any of the things that they're supposed to be doing to grow their business. They're just sitting in the store waiting for somebody to pull the handle and walk in the door. They're the ones that tend to like the territory business. They're the ones that say, um, I have this brand for this hundred mile radius and nobody else can buy from me um, or can buy that product except for me. That's ludicrous. And I think that mindset in the industry is why we've ended up with some bad dealers with bad attitudes and, and egos and personalities that I don't want to name names, but there's certainly a few out there that I, people have called me and said, I'll never buy from so-and-so again. And I think the problem is, is that they know if you live in their region and their territory, you can only buy it from them. And they'll have that manufacturer's support that you can only buy it from them. That doesn't make any sense to me. That's how we've ended up with bad attitudes and shitty dealers. I think that we've put the emphasis on a geographic a geography instead of putting it on customer service and going the extra mile for the customer. So I, I'm just not a fan of that. Um, you know, today we we do have one or two brands that we carry that are like that doesn't make any sense at all. I'm hoping that they'll get with the times and and realize that you can buy a car from anyone, anywhere, at any time. You can buy almost anything else from anyone, anywhere, anytime. And I think that the, the audio industry really needs to take a hard look at this and make sure that the emphasis on customer service and and you know customer relation and not on four walls around a certain geography so um as i mentioned before you know getting back to what what i look for is would i take this product home would i buy this for me you know because long before i became a dealer long long before i became a dealer talking 1970s um i was an audiophile um, right from the early age because my father was an audiophile. So I was fortunate to grow up in a home with, you know, amplifiers, preamplifiers, reel-to-reel decks, turntables, you know, and cables were never a big deal. <laughs> they were never a big deal back then. But um, I grew up in that environment. And so for me, uh, it never stopped. It's not something that I did when I was, you know, 10 or 12 or 13 and then stopped no all through the 80s the seven late 70s 80s 90s 2000s on and on i was constantly you know swapping gear going to trade shows reading every article i could get my hands on reading every review and it's been like that i mean i remember back in the 1980s having the carver mono blocks and the bmw 801s and thinking this is it they just won't get any better than this. Um, moving on to Magna Pans and so many other things. I've lost track of the, if, if you name it, I've probably owned it. The Wilsons, Sonus Fobbers, you know, Ravels, uh, you know, Maggie's. And I mean, I started with IMF transmission line speakers. That's how long ago, that's how long I've been around. So um, anyway, I digress. But um Another thing that, that I think is important, another characteristic for a dealer when they're looking at a line is what I call the brand ambassadors. This is the reps, the company, the support team around it. All of that is really, really crucial. And I'll explain why. Um, this is, you know, this is a battle. This is a war. And you want to make sure that when you're in the trenches, that the company has your back, that you've got great support people um when something breaks they're not like tough you figure it out you know you want to make sure that they're there to work with you to make sure that the customer is ultimately happy um you want to make sure that this company is is forward thinking the the the, the engineers the designers they're constantly innovating and not not doing what i call sos the same old shit 
you know, we, we need to make sure that they're constantly pushing the envelope forward, thinking outside the box and driving exciting and innovative new products and, and not just SOS. So that's something that's very, very important to look at. Um, you also want to make sure that the company has a good marketing strategy. There's some companies have a great marketing company, great, sorry, great marketing strategy. Some could argue they're actually more of a marketing company than they are a, a, a manufacturing company. Um, but you want to make sure they have a good marketing strategy. So they've got, you know, they're participating in shows. That's number one. Uh, they're, they're getting reviews out there. Um, you know, there, there's advertisements, you, you know, this is something, the constant contact, if you will, um, that there's constant touch points and you're seeing that because that's going to help drive customers your way. The last thing you want to do is have a great product that nobody knows about because then you have to start telling the story. So you, you know, you want to make sure that story is told, uh, when the person's walking in the door. So you're not saying, You've probably never heard of this brand or this product, but let me tell you about it. That makes your job as a dealer a lot easier when the story has already been told. Um, another thing that I look at, I don't know if a lot of dealers do, is something I look at is, is there a strategy beyond the current founder or you know chief designer or whatever? Is there, is there a strategy for when that person passes uh, or retires, that there's there's a path forward, if you will. Uh, we've recently seen some examples where, uh, you know, the, the founders have passed away. You know, most recently, Vladimir Lamb. Um, we had one with uh, Charlie Hansen at AIR. I mean, there's been a bunch. Uh, you could look at uh, Dieter Burmeister. There's been a bunch. And, and in some cases, the companies move forward great um with great success and in other cases they they tend to struggle a little bit so you want to make sure that that company has a future because the last thing you want to do as a dealer is make a massive investment bring in a lot of product get your clients excited about this product and then somebody passes away and the company is on life support you know so that's something that i look at a lot is is there something beyond the original founder um I think the last thing is something I've already you know touched on and, and that's just making sure that the the team at the the manufacturer the distribution the distributor that they're with you in the trenches that they're providing information on a timely manner uh, they're answering questions that you may have as a dealer that your customers are bringing to you um, and that they're they're driving you know things forward they're they're marketing they're advertising, they're getting the reviews, um, and they're working really, really hard to, to support the dealer network, which is ultimately bringing them, you know, um, success. So I think that's, that pretty much wraps it up. Um, I hope that's given you some interesting insight um, in, in how we work and how I see personally some of the other dealers out there and the other, the other folks that go to market and I'm not talking anybody particular, but I, I have had numerous conversations and some they're just focused on, Hey, if it sells, that's all I care about me. I'm a hardcore audiophile. So I want to make sure I love it first. And if I love it first, then I'm definitely going to go for it. So anyway, thanks for watching. Enjoy your Sunday. All the best.